Welcome to another episode of Message from Mom, where we're busting the myth that mothers-in-law aren't necessarily monsters-in-law. And I'm joined by my lovely co-host, who happened to be my daughter's-in-law. And to the left of me is Kelly. Hi, I'm Kelly. I am married to Beth's oldest son, Alex. And to the right of me is Chelsea. Hi, I'm Chelsea. I'm married to Beth's middle son, Andrew. One day I'm going to throw a curveball and go to the right of me. (laughs) (laughs) Because I always go to the left. I know. I know. So why? So pay attention. I might just throw that in. Coming up, not today, obviously, but coming up. So, uh, and we have uh, probably, I think, my favorite segment today that we're going to talk Mm -hmm. about. So it's based on Desert Island Discs, correct, Kelly? Yes, that's right. It's Uh, a long running BBC radio show. mm -hmm. Mm hmm. But we have morphed it into just Desert Island, and then we just bring in whatever we want to. Um, and today it's TV shows. So what top five TV shows we would take <laughs> to the Desert Island with us? And I have a list of um, 20, but I'm only supposed to have five. So we'll see what I come up with <laughs> when I'm put to the test here in just a few few minutes. But before we get to the podcast, we're going to raise our glass. In a toast, because we know you don't have to be a blood relative to cheers. love your relative. So cheers, ladies. Cheers. Cheers. To another episode. Hmm. All right. <laughs> That's good. Um, so I'm just going to kick it off. So my message from mom today is really, I'm just going to just touch briefly about the evolution of TV since we were talking about TV shows. And because it was a big part of my growing up mm-hmm. years. And I think mm-hmm. at one point, everybody was worried about us spending too much time in front of the boob tube. I mean, now I, can, I think we could um, interject social media into that mm-hmm. blank that we used to think that, that TV was. But anyway, so just a little brief um, discussion about the TV. So the first TV was, do you know when it was invented, Kelly? Um. I was kind of surprised about this. Yeah, I mean, I know it's 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 got to be the the early 30s or late 20s, something like that, like way sooner than than mm-hmm. we ever know, right? We ever knew. Mm-hmm. So it's 1929 when the first television was commercially produced and sold. Although it took until the 1950s for the TV to replace radio as a dominant. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, form or broadcast medium. Yeah. And so, and I really see that in my mom's life. Mm-hmm. So, and, and so here's also another little fun fact. In 1950, so that was before my mom was married. She got married in 1954. So, but in 1950, only 9% of the households had a TV. So Chelsea, can you guess what that number was in 1960? So 9% of households. 9% of households in 1950 owned a TV. So very few, Mm. very, very few. Maybe like 60%. 60% in 1960. Mm -hmm. Okay. It is 90% in 1960. So in just 10 years, that is how. It's crazy. The TV morphed and then uh, then along with it were television shows. And, And I can also remember too that you know, TVs have also come a long way from mm-hmm. when, I mean, it was like a piece of furniture when I was growing up. Yeah. yeah first, well, first it said the very first one was very, very tiny. Yeah. I bet it was only like, it was this big. Or it was something. very, very tiny. And then it morphed into just being a big hunk of furniture Yeah, that, you know, took up like half of your living room. And mm-hmm. that, that's what I grew up with. And now we have these beautiful flat screen mm-hmm. TVs that are like a piece of furniture, but it's more like an artwork because most of them are on our walls or yeah. the flat screens are. So yeah. it's been interesting to see that morph. But I've also, um, the first TV show was also back in the late, or right after the advent of the first TV in 1929. So that was called, I have it written down. So the first TV show was called The Queen's Messenger. So I thought that was very interesting. Was it kind of like a, was it like a, it was a drama? Oh, it's so, but were they actors acting as if they were stage actors or was it more like a televised radio play or something? That, like, you know what, they, that, that I don't know. I didn't do that. Interesting. Didn't take that much of a deep dive. I just, yeah. with, you know, what was the first TV mm-hmm. show, but also, so then, um, so that was way back in 1929. So obviously Nobody really watched that show. I don't even know how many episodes there were, but it was, it's a Queen's Messenger. We, we can, only had the pilot. We can yeah. take a little bit of a deeper dive into that. But Everyone's watching. But during the 1950s, so that's really when, you know, from 1950, 9% mm-hmm. of 
families own a TV to 1960, 90%. So really the fifties, I think are, there was called the golden age of TV. Yeah. And then that's when it, like a lot of game shows sprung up. And so do either of you remember truth or consequences? Yes. Mm -mm. You remember that? I don't mm -hmm. remember that. Yeah. Truth or consequences. Lots of game shows popped up. Variety shows popped up. Texaco Star Theater was very popular back then. I think variety shows were like the mainstay, mm -hmm. right? They like, really were. Because it had music and yes. comedy and mm -hmm. skits and mm -hmm. famous yeah. people to come on. And, right. Yeah. It really kind of morphed into the Carol Burnett show, mm -hmm. you know, during the 60s and 70s. But uh, Westerns were also popular. Hopalong Cassidy was one of them. And also The Tonight Show that had, I mean, it was huge for years and years and years, but it, that came on the scene in 1957, and that was the Jack Parr. Oh, Jack Parr. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. uh, Tonight Show, and then it went to Johnny Carson, Jay Leno, and then now, who has it now? Is that? Who does have it now? Yeah, can Jimmy, we, yeah. oh, we're going to ask our producer, who does the Tonight Show now? Is it Jimmy Fallon? Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, right. so he took over for the, yeah. okay, for the Tonight Show. Okay, well, Jack Parr is who kicked it off. Um, but before we get into our desert Island TV shows, because I know that each one of us will probably have a sitcom on board, but sick, or maybe you don't, yeah. um, but sitcoms were really one of the more popular TV shows. Mm -hmm. And it was because they could, so they, the writers would write 22 minutes, mm -hmm. allowing eight minutes for advertising. So advertising has always been a very big part of yeah. TV and always will be, even though we can stream ad free, but uh, these days, but if you stream ad free, you actually have to pay for that premium. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you just want to, it's, it's kind of like the blog. So if people want to come over because we share content freely. So then we have ads that support that. But if you want an ad free experience, you can definitely pay for that too. But anyway, so those are just a little few fun things. Really quick. I have another fun fact to throw in there actually. So when talking about sitcoms, mm -hmm. so most um, before I Love Lucy, right. sitcoms were like a single camera type of situation. So mm -hmm. it was like a stage play. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, but Desi Arnaz invented the three or five camera, three camera. Um, mm -hmm. sitcom mm -hmm. and which all sitcoms now do. So and it's actually become kind of how you delineate Mm -hmm. uh, what type of sitcom mm -hmm. a sitcom is, is it, is it a three camera sitcom show? Yes. Is it? Yeah. So yeah. I thought that's really he's, interesting. He's very genius. He yeah. was. And that show was very genius. Mm -hmm. And actually it's on my list. I have 20 here. I will pare it down to five. <laughs> maybe I, I have some time. I have some, maybe I have some time. So I'll kick oh. it off. So we, we uh, do our desert Island picks just round Robin style. Mm -hmm. So Kelly, I'll kick it off to you while oh. I'm still perusing. I'm still perusing my list. Making your choices. Yes, making my choices. I know. I know. So hard. Yeah. So hard. <laughs> I always make it harder than it really is because I'm thinking, oh, what would I want to watch over and over and over again? It's hard. Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> On that desert <laughs> island. I, I am a big TV watcher. Mm -hmm. um, but I, so while it was kind of challenging in one sense to think of all the shows that I love, mm -hmm. I Definitely am honed in on the shows that I have rewatched multiple times from start to finish and that I will continue to do so. Mm -hmm. So those are my picks. So okay. my first one is Northern Exposure. And in my opinion, this was everybody looks back like all the TV critics and folks that write about TV talk about how the Sopranos and the Breaking Bad era and the Mad Men era was mm -hmm. the the initiation of prestige TV, but I'm going to actually challenge them to consider Northern Exposure as the first prestige television show. Mm -hmm. um, so this ran um, from 1990 to 95 on CBS. Mm -hmm. I remember watching it in real time. Um, it was created by Joshua Brand and John Falsey, but in 94, Falsey and Brand resigned because there was a big lawsuit because there was a writer who had written a book with the premise of this show, basically, and he sued them for um, infringement, mm -hmm. um, though it wasn't based exactly on his book. Um, that whole lawsuit created a fallout. Falsey and Brand left and then David Chase took over as executive producer. And we all know then that David Chase went on to create The Sopranos. OK, mm -hmm. so prestige was in the mix like mm -hmm. way before that was even mm -hmm. a term. Mm -hmm. um, the thing I love about this show, so many things. The cast is amazing. The premise is uh, a doctor in New York um, gets his his med school uh, tuition paid by the state of Alaska. Mm -hmm. So in 
uh, to repay that debt to the state of Alaska, he has to go to Alaska to be a doctor there for a certain period of time. Mm -hmm. uh, initially, he was supposed to be in Anchorage, but then they have too many doctors there already, so they send him to a, a tiny town, uh, which is based on the town Talkeetna. Mm -hmm. um, and so it just it goes on. I think it's five seasons, and it's just it's so smartly written. The character development is amazing for a show during the nineties, like no show was doing what they were doing. And they had a budget for music on this show. The soundtrack is incredible. And that's actually what prevented the show from streaming and from being sold on DVD after the fact. Oh. So there was an initial DVD run of the series, mm -hmm. but once that was gone, that was it. It wasn't in reruns and it never was available for streaming because they couldn't secure the rights to the music. Mm. It was too expensive. That's all changed now, actually. You can watch this show on Amazon. Okay. Mm. So, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Amazon yep. bought it. I've never watched yep. that. And they've re-released the, DV, okay. the DVDs of the show, of the entire complete series, with the original music. Mm -hmm. Well, I remember nice. that show. Yeah. I watched it in real time. Did you watch it in real time? I did. Too, too young? No, I was in high you school. Were, okay. I actually, so I started high school in 90, graduated in 94. Mm -hmm. So I watched this show all through high school. Through high school. Um, okay. Absolutely loved it. My mom and I. Uh, we just loved it. Um, and she and I have actually, since she lives here in Athens now, we've started every mm -hmm. once in a while, we'll get together and rewatch. Yeah. Uh -huh. So nice. I, lo I love how you can bond over TV shows oh, with sure. friends and family. Yeah. I do. And I remember that show and it was so quirky at the time. And the Super characters quirky. were so quirky. Mm -hmm. but I love the female lead. Uh, Janine Turner. I, Janine, I just, what was her name in the show? Um, well, they called her by her last name, O'Connell, but she was Maggie Margaret. Oh, Maggie, O'Connell. that's right. Maggie O'Connell. Yeah. Well, I loved her because she had short hair. Oh, yeah. And she just rocked a pixie cut like nobody else. And, oh, and I've always had short so hair. Beautiful. So I've always bonded with those actresses that have short hair because yeah. there aren't there many of them. Yeah. There really are not. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But I, I always I always appreciated that show. It was super cute, super very show. quirky, and and set in a locale that wasn't the norm, which was nice. Yeah. I mean, it's, nice. it's actually what, like, mm -hmm. kind of spurred my interest in moving to Alaska or my willingness to, to move there. And it wasn't that different, I have to say. Like, they actually were pretty spot on. The show itself was filmed in... Rosalind, Washington, which is east of Seattle, mm -hmm. by maybe an hour and a half, two hours or something. I went mm -hmm. to the town, uh -huh. driving back and forth from Alaska. I would stop at um, in Rosalind, Washington. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, just, I mean, just such a. I, I wish that more people were on board with this show because I feel like it. It still feels fresh, mm -hmm. and it was from. I like, there are very '90s things that haven't aged well, but it's. Mm -hmm. As nostalgia, like those aspects are really fun to see, but all in all, like at its core, that show has held up beautifully. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. Okay. Chelsea? Well, so I would say all of these shows are not necessarily in a particular order, except this one mm -hmm. is my <laughs> so absolute is number, number one. one. Okay. okay. And it's Gilmore Girls. Mm -hmm. I love that show. Mm -hmm. I will rewatch that show. I mean, I've probably rewatched every single season of Gilmore Girls at least seven or eight times mm -hmm. over. Um, and it's like my feel good show. It kind of reminds me of me and my mom. Um, even though my mom didn't have me when she was in high school, she had me at the age of 24, but mm -hmm. <laughs> our relationship was very similar to how Rory and Lorelai, mm -hmm. um, have their relationship. And, um, yeah, it's just, it's my feel good show. It's the show that I have on and Andrew comes in <laughs> the room and he's like, what's wrong? Are you in a bad mood? <laughs> yeah. watching Gilmore Girls. He automatically assumes that, um, because I am watching Gilmore Girls that I'm in a bad mood, but basically for your feel good, it's my feel good show. But basically for people that are not familiar with Gilmore Girls, which I feel like most people are mm -hmm. um you know it's a mother and daughter and she has the daughter very young when she's 16 and then she basically moves to this small town um called stars hollow and she creates um a life with her daughter and basically is like a single working mom and um ultimately she has to go back to her parents and ask for money mm -hmm. so that her daughter, who's extremely smart, mm -hmm. um, can get into this private school. And then it becomes, you know, a relationship between mm -hmm. how her mom and her relationship was, which is the exact opposite of what mm -hmm. her relationship with mm -hmm. Rory is. But I, but I love the trajectory, though, between the relationship between um, the grandmother 
the daughter and then you know so it's Lorelai Rory and then what was the grandmother's name I can't remember um oh my gosh what is the grandmother's name um well there's a beautiful trajectory between all their relationships yeah and even though Lorelai can be very contentious with her parents it's really very it was very heartening to me to see how they really rebuilt their relationship, even though they've been oh, so yeah. strange for a long time. Yeah. And they did. So Gilmore Girls actually did an offshoot, um, like series. I mean, it was still Gilmore Girls, but it was, um, it was, I don't know if it was day in the life or it basically they did, um, seasons. So they did four offshoot episodes and they were longer episodes. So almost like an hour, an hour and 20 minute long. And they did, um, winter spring summer and then fall Mm -hmm. and it was um cool to see because basically after all of this series went through the winter spring you know summer and fall was when rory was actually 32 oh wow and that was Mm -hmm. the age that lorelei was when rory was 16 Mm -hmm. so it was kind of seeing how rory's life Mm -hmm. you know came to Mm -hmm. be at the age of 32 and how it was different from her mom's Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, well, that's a great show. And the, the dialogue is so snappy. I mean, it's, it's like, so, it's, yeah. so psh, 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 psh. it's funny and it's just cute. And mm-hmm. there's parts that make you cry and then mm-hmm. parts that's, that make you laugh. And yeah. it's just what, great. What show. years did that show run? Um, yeah. I want to say that it was in the early 2000s, wasn't it? The 90s. Yeah, late 90s, early 2000s is what oh, I yeah. like. Producer, can you take a look in, uh, in our... Okay. 2000 to 2007. And Melissa McCarthy was she's, the chef. She's she the chef. Yeah. <laughs> was so I know. Yeah, you know, as she evolved into this, yeah. yeah, you know, Hollywood actress, but that's where well, she got yeah, to start. Yeah, that is start. where she mm-hmm. and she was start. She was cute in that role. Really cute. I know. So, yeah, I love that show. Really good. Good pick. Okay, for sure, this is my first pick, and it is the Mary Tyler Moore show <laughs> that, um, I want to say, and can you check on those dates too? I want to say like 1970, but this was a lineup on Saturday night Mm -hmm. and you did not care that you were staying home. 1970, that's when it came. And how long did it run? Seven seasons. Wow. So 77. I didn't realize it ran. So, and I graduated high school in 76. So Mm -hmm. I was in high school for some of this, middle school for another, the very beginning part, Mm -hmm. but. This is really the first TV show that depicted a single working Mm -hmm. woman. And she was, it was set in Minneapolis, Minnesota, which actually I I lived in Minneapolis uh, Mm -hmm. years later. And it was really fun to see. It was Lake of the Isles is where she lived and worked downtown and, and, you know, and where she threw her hat up in the air, her little red beret. And that was in front of the Dayton Hudson (laughs) store, which is a local Minneapolis store. I've never seen it. You never see Mary Jo now. You would love it just for the fashion. I've seen either of. I'm gonna have to go back and watch yeah. both of those. Mm-hmm. Just for the fashion, go yeah. back because she always had a drop dead gorgeous outfit. Also, wasn't Ted Knight her boss? On, so go and no, watch Ted it. Ted Knight was the anchor, and Lou oh, Grant, that's right. uh, mm. uh, who was <laughs> who was the actor that played Lou Grant? Can you can you pull up the? Ted Knight was the anchor, so he Ted, was... He's, like, one Ted. of my favorite actors he was of Ted. all time. He was Ted on yeah, the show. Yeah, that's right. His name was Ted uh-huh. on the show. I love him in that and show. Murray. Yeah. There was Murray. Oh, Ed, Ed Asner. Asner played that's Blue right. Grant. But yeah. uh, it was an, an ensemble cast. Everybody was perfectly cast, mm-hmm. was perfectly written. It was, and as I said, it was, the you know, the first breakthrough role for a single mm-hmm. working woman and and dating and... Uh, you know, all that that brought along, but it really was s- centered on the work mm-hmm. hours and, yeah. and, and her relationship with the, with everybody that she worked with. And I, they were all, absolutely all adorable. And, um, Sue Ann Nivens, who was Betty White, mm-hmm. and she was completely different than the role that she depicted in the oh, golden so girls. Different. Yeah. So in, in Mar- the Mary Tyler Moore show, she was, you know, she was this Single woman, like a shark barracuda, always, you know, out looking for that Cougar, man that, you know, her next, you know. I love Betty White. <laughs> it was, yeah. yeah, she's so Aww. funny in this role, but definitely Mary Tyler Moore stayed home many Saturday nights and then was actually kind of sad if I had a date later on You'd because miss I had to miss Mary Tyler Moore. And there was no TV, no, TVR. There was no, TVR. Or, um, <laughs> no, there was no recourse. You just well, you missed it. I want to draw a connection. 
all of our favorite shows that we just did, um, we were all in high school when they aired. So I was in high school for Gilmore Girls. You were in high school for yours. And yeah, That's interesting. So yeah, it is interesting. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. Okay, Kelly, what's number two on your number list? Number two is Mad Men. Oh, so good. Mm -hmm. So I, I knew when this show, so I worked in advertising when this show came out and I worked in advertising prior to it coming out. So the buzz around all advertising was like, oh my gosh, this show is coming out on AMC. It's going to be amazing. And this was really the ushering in of the prestige TV. Mm -hmm. um, created by Matthew Weiner. It ran from 2007 to 2015 on AMC and I, we would have watch parties for this show. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. It was on Sunday nights or something. Maybe it was on a night of the week where we could all kind of get together and we would make cocktails and we would have our ad friends from the office mm -hmm. come over and we would watch the show. It, it meant that much mm -hmm. to us at the time. And it still means that much to me now because this show has proven to be just like one of the most complex, interesting, mm -hmm shows that has I, I feel like I've ever seen like it's just the costumes are beautiful mm -hmm. everyone is perfectly cast mm -hmm. John Hamm is as uh, mm -hmm. Don Draper like mm -hmm. could it get any better mm -hmm. I mean yeah just a fantastic show it's I, I'm sure it's a lot of people's favorite mm -hmm. show I know it's Andrew's, Andrew's favorite show one. yeah it that's is. his grandma girls yeah. is yeah. <laughs> Mad Men. It really is. so I mean it's just it's just it's so rich um for so many reasons you can turn it on and just watch I mean there are there's a darkness to it that I think makes it less rewatchable as like a comfort go-to show mm -hmm. but I do think that when you're in the mood for just like really deep good drama mm -hmm. with a little bit of comedy mm -hmm. i think there's there's quite mm -hmm. a bit of fun to it there, there is yeah so i will just share so that came out we were living overseas so when we came back in the summertime and then we were able to stream things or mm -hmm. watch tv shows back to back so i discovered mad men but i actually had to turn it off because this depicts an era mm -hmm. that i actually experienced and grew up in my dad was truly um the character yeah what was john what was john his, draper don, yeah don draper thank you you just said that so Very my dad actually alcoholic. was uh -huh, yeah. don draper and my mom was betty and i was sally and i and actually i mean just even down to the cocktail glasses they were the cocktail glasses that my yeah. parents had i mean oh, everything so was just like so i actually kind of so i watched a few episodes and i actually had to turn it off because it was like triggering oh some things. too close to home too close to home it really was it took yeah. me a little while to separate the two uh -huh, mm -hmm. the, the two and then to just really understand yes but it, but the portrayal of that era is so spot on yeah and the writing is so good so good mm -hmm. and it's acted and ca and casted so well and acted so beautifully and yes so the set decks i mean like that oh i mean anytime like i I just want visually like I'll just I'll like because I've seen it so many times mm -hmm. that I can kind of just like put the darkness of the characters away a little bit and just watch it for the beauty mm -hmm. of the set deck, mm -hmm. the costumes, the hairdressing, the makeup. Everything. Like it's yeah. just Who so the, visually the stunning. Secretary that was a redhead. Joan. Uh, Joan. Yeah. She was yeah. so Christina, Christina Hendricks. Hendricks. Yeah. Oh, I loved her. She yeah. was so cool. Oh, I loved fantastic. All. I mean, she was beautiful. I mean, Peggy was great. Yep. I mean, everybody mm -hmm. was great. So yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. Great show. And yes, that's Andrew's number one. Number one. He loves it. Number one. I've watched show. I have watched some episodes and I do like it. It's just mm -hmm. that um I always end up falling asleep in it. <laughs> <laughs> which that's not, that's more of a me problem than um it is the show because I do like the show, but then Andrew will keep watching it and I don't know what's going on. And yeah. I'm very much I like yeah. to watch it start to finish. So yeah. that's well, really yeah. he's watched it five hundred million times. That's yeah. exactly see those of us that you have watched actually... it five hundred million times can hop in at any point and well, just be like yeah oh yeah that's yeah, how i am exactly. with yeah. you know my shows too so yeah. okay <laughs> all right chelsea what do you have number two my number two <laughs> is sex in the city mm. oh, um i had a hard time not putting that on my uh, list yeah i um i'm actually uh, re-watching it now because yeah. it's on netflix mm -hmm. now so good that's and, definitely a rewatchable show oh, oh it really yeah. is Yep. Um, and I just really, I mean, I think the fashion, you know, that mm -hmm. Carrie has, like, that's mm -hmm. great. I love the storyline of the friendship between her and Charlotte, Miranda and Samantha. And, um, I mean, just the whole 
series I just yeah. think is a great it's a great series it's very rewatchable mm-hmm. it's funny but then you know mm-hmm. I mean I think it depicts probably um single life pretty well mm-hmm. you know and yeah. how Definitely. in New York single and New York Definitely. how um dating is and they talk about you know well, do we want to be married or do we want to not be married and uh-huh. um And then, you know, the different characters, like with Charlotte being the one that's like, well, I want to be married and I have to have a husband. And then you've got Samantha, who's the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. So traditional wife, Charlotte, traditional wife, Charlotte, she wanted to be a traditional wife. Yeah, we just had that podcast. So So I think um, I, I. I struggled with not putting that show on my list because I have rewatched it from start Mm -hmm. to finish a few times. And but I will never forget my first introduction to that show. I didn't watch it in real time because I didn't I didn't have HBO, couldn't afford Mm -hmm. cable. I didn't watch it in real time either. I mean, I remember when it was on, but I was always like Mm -hmm. remiss, like I can't afford to get HBO. I'm not getting that, Mm -hmm. you know, but. When I moved to Alaska and I lived in my little log cabin, we had a television. What, do you remember those um, old the TVs that had the built-in VCR? Yes. Oh, yeah. So the VCR. Yeah. Was, so we had one of those. And the TV, I mean, it might have been a 13-inch mm-hmm. TV. It was tiny. Um, but I ran into a girl in town one day, and we got to talking. And she said, we, we started talking about Sex in the City for some reason. Uh-huh. And I said, gosh, you know, that's one of the shows. Like, I always wanted to watch it, but never had mm-hmm. HBO. And she's like, I have the whole series on VHS. I'll let you borrow it. <laughs> and so, so she, she lent me her box set oh of the VHS. Gosh, all of our VHSs. And, yes. And so I, I I watched it on DVD for the first time. So like it's you? like the different generations. Yeah. And yeah. it was one of my friends. She had like the whole series on DVD. Yeah. And that's where yes. how I watched it yeah well I'll yeah. never forget living in this you know 12 by 12 log cabin in Alaska and watching sex in the city and uh, on this VCR and just thinking like oh how glamorous like here I am out in the middle of the woods <laughs> nowhere with no running water and I'm watching these women in New York City I thinking heels. like oh my gosh well, what a life yeah. and I think the cosmos cosmos fun. So fancy the the relationship between her and big and then her and Aiden, I feel like it's like a really good well, depiction. So of- here's something I will tell you that Aiden, the guy who plays Aiden is John Corbett and uh-huh. John Corbett is the radio DJ on Northern exposure. Uh-huh. That's where he oh, got okay. his, like that was that, his yeah. first big role was Northern exposure. Oh, wow. He plays Chris. Okay. Um, and, uh, you go back and watch Northern exposure and you see him and you're just like, no wonder this guy plays Aiden. Like he is, beautiful and amazing and it's kind of the same it's almost the same it's it's in the wheelhouse of that character Uh like it's it's kind of amazing yeah so when he turned up on sex in the city i was like oh my god it's chris in the morning Mm -hmm. amazing (laughs) Mm -hmm. oh Mm -hmm. but yeah that's my second one okay well my second one is seinfeld Uh, it might be on your list too maybe not it's not (laughs) <laughs> that was a very innovative show at the time. We hadn't seen anything like that. And I'll never forget because I, I saw the first episode, the pilot Mac was traveling. I can't even remember where he was. And I had just put, so uh, AJ and Andrew were born. I, just, I didn't have Christian yet. Mm-hmm. And so I just, had just put the two of them down to bed and we had a game room upstairs. So their bedrooms were upstairs. So we had to, uh, a house for master on the main and then they were upstairs and then so i would get them settled and then i would just go to the game room and watch tv so i was just you know flipping with the remote control we only had three channels at the time well i guess we had cable so i guess i yeah. could have you know tuned into sports and news and things like that um but seinfeld came on i'm like okay i'm gonna i'm, I'm gonna watch this and i am telling you i just about peed my pants from <laughs> laughing so hard from that yeah. first episode. And I was hooked yeah. and I couldn't wait to share it with Mac, you know, who, who had no idea what this was. And I can yeah. remember, you know, actually, you know, talking to that evening. Oh my gosh, I just found this hilarious new show and you are going to absolutely love it. And it truly is a show about nothing. Yeah. And because, <laughs> and I can remember at the time, cause it, it took a while that this was, I mean, they were actually very lucky that mm-hmm. NBC stuck with them because it didn't resonate with a lot of people at the beginning. Mm-hmm. It took a while. Was it a filler show? It was in the summer. Uh-huh. Yeah. Same with Northern Exposure. It's amazing how, how these filler shows can sometimes just, that's but, it. But Brandon Tartikoff, so he was mm-hmm. head of NBC at the time and he stuck with the show, which happened to be, then it turned into one of their most popular shows ever. 
Well, and that ever. cast that cast of people were the yeah, first yeah. TV actors to make a, a million dollars an episode. Oh, was it really? Oh, wow. So. Then, yeah. Well, good wow. for them. I'm pretty sure. It was, do you want to verify it either, that? It was either them or friends. I think Can it was. Can you verify Seinfeld. the um, salary? I'm pretty. A Seinfeld? I'm pretty sure they were the first. A million dollars an million episode. Dollars. Oh. It could have been friends. Well, they really kind of opened the door for friends. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay, so it was just Seinfeld. It so, wasn't everybody. So it was Seinfeld himself, and he had half a million seasons seven and eight, and then finally struck a million an episode. So good for him. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a character that's going to live on mm -hmm. everywhere forever. forever. And I loved his parents. Mm -hmm. oh my I gosh. loved when he would have to go down to Florida and visit them, or even when they came to New York. Oh my gosh. So Wait. Hilarious. So I've not watched Seinfeld, but now that you, you mentioned haven't? Seinfeld, Come I on. haven't. But now that you mentioned the whole parents thing, uh -huh. um, hilarious. <laughs> so Andrew sent me a video because we, I took him down to Florida to visit my grandparents, mm -hmm. and I threw my neck out in my aunt's bed. Mm -hmm. And he sent me the video and he was like, this is Lane. literally you right now Lane. because we were supposed to go <laughs> to Universal Studios the next day. Mm -hmm. And I had to take like five Advil, tape my neck up mm -hmm. and put like, yeah. you know, the icy hot. Yeah. He's like, you're Elaine right now yeah. was, from that, visiting. In that Florida. Was they went to visit his parents and yeah. to sleep on the that's so funny. Or, or the sleep couch. The sofa couch. Yeah, the sofa. Thank you. Oh. But anyway. That's, I know. I need to watch it. It's a great really show. Good. It's yeah. so hilarious. I mean, the, I will have to say the, the the last two or three seasons were not as strong. I think they maybe have, should have wrapped it up. They maybe it went bit. on too long. Mm -hmm. yeah. It went on a little bit too I long. I mean, a lot of shows a lot suffer of shows, from that. Yes, they do. But, but it makes it doesn't make us love them any less no, in the long run. No, but yeah. so many... Um, mm -hmm. classic scenes, the soup Nazi, oh you know, gosh. comes from Seinfeld and, and, um, yeah. but anyway, so, so, yep, good. so that was on my list for sure. Love that's it. on my list. So Kelly, fantastic show. Number three. Okay. Number three is West wing. Mm. Mm. Haven't seen that either. Oh girl. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Um, so this ran <laughs> Kelly's from, top five list. <laughs> this, this ran from 1999 to, uh, you're 2006. A lot, you're a lot younger too than. Yeah, That's true. her TV watching is. A yeah, my TV different. watching yeah. is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, so 1999 to 2006 on NBC, it was created by Aaron Sorkin. Mm -hmm. So we're all familiar a lot more now than we were then of the walk and talk mm -hmm. <laughs> filming style. Aaron Sorkin coined that and did that first with uh, West Wing. Mm -hmm. um, so the I, I'm sure that our listeners and viewers will be familiar with this show for the most part. Um, but Martin Sheen plays President Jed Bartlett. Mm -hmm. He's so good. So amazing. Don't you wish we had a president like that? Yeah. So there's. We've there never had actually, a president like that. I think it was the 2016 election when everyone was like, Donald Trump, Joe Biden, like, what the hell? We want Jed Bartlett. Mm -hmm. And there were actual signs created and mm -hmm. like kind of inter internet yes. campaigns about like yes. Jed Bartlett for president, um, which I'm down for 100%. Mm -hmm. um, Stockard Channing played his wife, um, so Abby Bartlett. Mm -hmm. John Spencer played Leo McGarry, which he just died um, maybe like four or five years ago. Maybe it was during COVID or something, but he was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Bradley Whitford mm -hmm. played Josh Lyman. He was the deputy cast. chief of staff. So amazing. Mm -hmm. Allison Janney, who has become one of my favorite actresses ever. She was the press secretary, CJ Craig. Mm -hmm. Rob Lowe was in it. Mm -hmm. Deputy. I mean, it was just like was the so most good. amazing cast so Mm -hmm. And everyone was like, to quote uh, Bill Simmons, rewatchables, everyone was just pitching 110. Like, it was amazing. That show was fantastic. Mm -hmm. There again, the dialogue is just like, it's like Gilmore Girls. Boom, 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 mm -hmm. boom. They're on point. I They're... mean, and the storylines, like, they were yes. topical. They were like, mm -hmm. they totally resonated, mm -hmm. not only with people at the time, like, when it was airing on TV, but even now, like Alex and I have, we have the box set and it's available on Netflix. Mm -hmm. We have rewatched that show from start to finish probably five or six times over the last seven years. We probably do it like once a year. Mm -hmm. And that show is a great comfort show, but it's also just like when you're not paying attention to it and then you tune into it, it's still, the topics are still totally mm -hmm. relevant. Very relevant. Mm -hmm. They're talking about immigration. They're talking about war with Russia. Like, I mean, it's like so relevant and it's kind of amazing that, that that's 
it that it's maintained mm -hmm. over all these years. Mm -hmm. 1999. Sure. It's incredible. 25 years. It's crazy. Anyway, West Wing. Yep. Beautiful show. It is good to show. watch it. I do like that show. Very, very good. Okay, Chelsea. Number three. Number Desert three. Island show. Number three is um a show that I actually watched. I then read the book and then I rewatched the show because I was so blown away. Mm -hmm. Um, but sharp objects. Oh I mm -hmm. loved that show. Mm -hmm. Um and it is it's a little bit of a psychological like thriller. So if you're not into anything like that, then I don't recommend it. Mm -hmm. Um, but I loved it. And basically it's about, um, this reporter that goes back to her small town to investigate these mysterious unsolved, um, murders that are happening. And, um, there's two girls that go missing and she basically has to stay back with her family, like on her family, um, house. And they have, you know, a, I think it's like a pig farm and I mean, they live on a bunch of land, but without giving it away, the mom, you know, is there and it's a lot of back and forth between the mom and, um, the, the daughter, the reporter that goes back. And then she also has a younger sister mm -hmm. that kind of gets into the mix. So mm -hmm. I don't want to give it away in case someone wants to watch it because the ending of this show Shocking. just blew my mind. I mean, I don't think I've ever had um, a show or I love thriller movies or psychological movies and scary movies, but this one, I mean, down to the final wire when the ending happened, mm -hmm. I was just completely blown away. Okay. There are, I feel like there are very few shows that can pull off that kind of surprise ending anymore, especially if it's a, what was it like a 10, a 10 run limited series or something? I think there's like it was 10 a, shows or something. Yeah. It was only one series. Um, yeah. so it wasn't season or one season. season. So a little Lim mini series. Limited series. Limited yeah. Yes. The fact that they managed to pull off that kind of ending after 10 episodes, like at the 10th episode, like I was really impressed with the way that that show was yeah. produced. It was Which really, I guess, really smart. Well, I ultimately, it was. Seen a, this, so you haven't seen I, it? No, it's really I, good. Oh, it's really good. I mean, ultimately, it is a book. So I guess, you know, um, I don't even. Uh, is it Jillian Flynn that wrote. Uh, Gone Girl. She, yeah, she wrote Gone Girl, but I don't know if so, she wrote this as well. Um, the it's book. A, it's it's. um. I think the, AJ, the who wrote the sharper objects who wrote that the relationship between the mom and the daughters is oh, yeah. so, so there's so many different layers and, layered. um, Jillian, okay. Is. It is Jillian. Did she write gone girl. She did. Just, yeah. Just to verify. I think she did write it. I have it here. You, okay. this, this lady has quite a mind. Right. For psychological thrillers. I, know, I did. I right? loved those. I know that's very... when, that's when like as a writer, I haven't published a book, but, writing and understanding what, what goes into it mm -hmm. that takes that takes a big toll on you yeah, i can imagine oh yeah, yeah. well sharp Writing objects like this yeah. it's great it, it is dark so i mean i will warn you if you it's on hbo max mm -hmm. yeah if you decide okay. to watch it but okay. i'm gonna i have to watch it because i've i've heard very good things about you'll this like it I, i've never watched it's wonderful it, like it, so. it takes place in st louis too mm -hmm. yeah. okay or she starts off in St. Louis because she's a reporter for the Post Dispatch, mm -hmm. but then she goes under rural St. Louis, which mm -hmm. or rural Missouri, which is where yep. Kelly is. Yeah. Okay, yep. is. Well, my next show is not dark at all. That's fine. So, <laughs> one thing in common, I've I've picked three sitcoms. So my next one is the Cosby Show, oh, which was also nice. very innovative at the time, mm -hmm. and that came out in the early '80s. Mm -hmm. Actually, it came out right before I was getting married. And so, hmm. um, so it saw the trajectory of me, you know, becoming single and then married and having a family of my own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was always very interested in the dynamics, the family dynamics that this show portrayed. Mm -hmm. And so it was Bill Cosby and he was, uh, he portrayed Phil or no Bill or Cliff, Cliff, Cliff Huxtable. Huxtable. Yeah. Yes. And Claire was his wife. Yeah. So Pleasure Rashad. Mm -hmm. Pleasure Rashad. And so he was a doctor. He was an OBGYN and had an office in their home and then she was a lawyer so you know two very successful um people that were married and their family was you know just everything to them so then they had five children and so just watching the trajectory of the children 
And so the, the first season really was based a lot on his comedy material that he had created and was, was on the um, you know, circuit for. And then he brought that into the show. And then everybody in the trajectory of each mm-hmm. character then w- was built in. And then you, and you did, you, you, you watched them grow up and get mm-hmm. married and, and start families of their own. But it was very groundbreaking at the time and really showed families in a very positive light which I loved. And I also, it represented African-Americans that had never been represented in this mm-hmm. particular way before. And I think that that was, you know, such a big um, step yeah. in America yeah. and, a, and a big coup uh, and, and a big win-win all the way around. But it was so funny, so sweet. And there again, I, I think the earlier episodes were, or the earlier seasons were better than the, than the later ones. But it was a great show. And I, if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. And it's just there again, it's a very feel good show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And such a positive spin on families, which is, you know, near and dear to my heart. So I, I love to see that. So. Yeah. I love the Cosby show. That was mm-hmm. Thursday night. Must see TV before must see TV what? became must see TV. I know. Yeah. And that's where you had, yeah. you had cheers and you had the Cosby show. And I even loved, I love Denise so much um on the cosby show that when she they had the spinoff show different world Mm -hmm. or when denise goes off to college um loved that show Mm -hmm. um yeah i'm i totally grew up on the cosby show super cute i loved it super cute super feel good Mm -hmm. okay kelly number four so my number four i kind of had a tie for number four i'll stick to my main and then i'll just do a polite mention of my second so downton abbey Mm. So I'm a I'm a huge I'm a huge sucker for period idea. dramas mm. and Downton Abbey is the gift that keeps on giving mm. uh, because they're actually filming the third movie now <laughs> so I cannot mm-hmm. wait for that to come out. <laughs> um, but, we actually um, went to a little um, they had like a little we did the museum Downton exhibit museum oh yeah in Atlanta we went it was a lot of fun yeah, it was fun it was cool we saw the sets of the kitchen we and did. stuff like that it was cool. uh huh. So um, Downton Abbey uh, ran from 2011 to 2015 in the U.S. on PBS as part of the Masterpiece Classic series Mm -hmm. created by Julian Fellows. It originally ran on the BBC from I think it was it started a year earlier there. So I think it started in uh, 2010. And Julian Fellows is one of the most amazing historical writers I think that we have today. Mm-hmm. So he, mm-hmm. uh, we, uh, Gosford park, vanity fair, the young Victoria, which was an mm-hmm. incredible TV show. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've seen it and now currently the gilded age. Mm-hmm. So he's, he's got quite, a, a reputation for writing historical characters, mm-hmm. time periods, everything like just beautifully, but also being responsible for making sure everything is executed um, accurately according to historical Mm -hmm. documentation and also period correct, uh, fashion set deck, all the things like any Julian fellows production, I feel like is going to be a masterpiece Mm -hmm. for so many reasons, the writing, one of them, the character development, another, but also set Mm -hmm. deck and design just completely, completely top notch. Mm-hmm. So Downton Abbey, I think I've rewatched that entire series probably four or five times. Um, love all the movies when they come out. Was sad to see it go. Why couldn't it just live on? I don't know. Mm-hmm. But the fact that they just keep doing yes. um, movies mm-hmm. is great. And all the actors and actresses that were part of the original show have been so excited to come back and do the movies. Mm-hmm. So the the kind of fervor for Downton Abbey is still there. And it's kind of amazing that that's the case all these years later. And, yeah. I, I mean, and the costumes are just yeah, so beautiful. Incredible. And that's yeah. what when we went to that little exhibit mm-hmm. and, and seeing the costumes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The costume personal was really, it was really cool. Really. Uh, I love, I mean, cause you really do need that costume to step into character mm-hmm. when it's a different time period. Yeah. It's so important to the whole scheme of yeah. show. So yeah. Yeah. The level good of detail. Show. I didn't Fantastic. even think about that, but yeah, good pick. Good pick. Mm-hmm. Really good pick. Okay. Chelsea, number four. Number four. Well, my number four is actually a period piece too. Um, it's Anne with an E. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was I show. loved uh-huh. that show. And I just recently watched that, I think at the beginning of this year, mm-hmm. um, cause I talked about it in one of our earlier yes. podcast yeah. episodes, but, um, there was just something about that show that, I mean, I just 
like every single night I would watch like two or three mm-hmm. um, episodes to the point where Andrew was like, am I ever going to see you again? Because he, <laughs> he didn't really get into it. And I was just so into it that I was like, I have to watch Anne with an E. Mm-hmm. Um, and there, that one was another one where it was like, it made you laugh. It made you cry. Um, there were times that it made me cry. And I was like, I was hysterically mm-hmm. sobbing in some points of it, but it's basically, um, the reimagining of the classic book, um, and with green Gables, right. Is that uh, Anne of of green Gables and of green Gables. Um, and it's the coming of age story of a young orphan. Um, and she's basically, um, mistakenly sent to, um, these aging siblings Mm -hmm. who live on Prince Edward Island. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just very cute. I feel like her character is great. Um, I mean, I just loved it. Mm-hmm. It was great. It's a good show. I've yeah. seen yeah. Uh, when the boys were growing up, AJ loved Anne of Green Gables because they had a TV mm-hmm. show. I don't know if it was, it was on PB- It was on PBS. It was PBS. It was well, really good. There may have been more than one, but the one I remember watching when I was a kid was um, Anne of Green Gables on PBS. And it was with um, the actress. I'll remember her name. I'm blanking on it right now, but she's gone on to become a director. Mm-hmm. Um, but she, I, I, that was an amazing show. Mm-hmm. And this one, I think really f- like, I think it's really hard to take old material and, and redo it. Mm-hmm. And this, it started as a book. It was, it's been at least one, maybe two TV yeah. shows, mm-hmm. but to take it and reimagine it now and to do it again, I feel like the new series and with an E follows, um, that original series that I remember on PBS mm-hmm. in such a, f- like not, a hundred percent faithful way in terms of the material, but in the feeling of it. Yeah. Uh, Sarah Polly was the girl that played the original Anne of Green okay. Gables on that PBS show. And Sarah Polly was a kind of a gangly. And, and, and this is the, the, mm-hmm. the thing about her is that she's about Anne is that she's kind of a gangly, you know, mm-hmm. dreamer yeah. character. And, and Sarah Polly really got it right in that first show. And the actress that plays her in this yeah. new show just really captures it in a beautiful way. No, she they was did great. a great job with this retelling. It's good. Mm-hmm. I had never seen any of the originals and I really, really liked this mm-hmm. one a lot. Yeah. Uh, well, I remembered the original and then I watched Anne with an E and then also read the books like mm-hmm. two gazillion mm-hmm. years ago. So they're all good. Yeah, they're all good. And it's just such a sweet story. And it will, it will pull on your heartstrings mm-hmm. and because it mm-hmm. really depicts real life mm-hmm. and real people and their mm-hmm. struggles and their triumphs and just very, very sweet. So good pick I like yeah. that. <laughs> that is a good pick. So I'm going to veer off. So I had my first three solidly in and then I was like, then I have this list <laughs> that I will <laughs> I not share with you. Choosing but, the last but Mad Men was on it and Sex and the City was on it and The West Wing. I kind of had a feeling that we had some overlap. Mm-hmm, yeah. So I didn't want to do that. So I'm going to really veer off into late night TV. And when late night with David Letterman came on the scene. So there again, very groundbreaking because we had the tonight show that was you know set in stone and david came along and just kind of really flipped the script on everything Mm -hmm. and it was again very innovative he was very innovative he was very sacrilegious he um had no fear of you know taking the camera out on the street and inter you know having the interviews with his regular people. I, remember, I love. I know, those. right? Those are my favorite. Uh, he just had so many great segments like that, and really one of my my very favorites was you know his top ten list. You mm-hmm. know, and he would come along. You know, and they do the That's you know, part of uh-huh. his monologue. I, I mean, it was yeah. yeah the top ten yeah, list. I love that. that. I loved his uh, sidekick, Paul Schaefer, mm-hmm. and just so many great guests. And he was really a very good interviewer in his own right. But as I said, very sacrilegious and just kind of just took that whole um as i said you know the the tonight show is johnny carson and you, we, you can't take anything away from johnny and then jay leno put his own spin on it but david really did come along and yeah and just um had his own take on it and was very fresh very innovative and and uh, so that really is one of my top shows, especially the early again the earlier seasons yeah mm-hmm. i remember tuning into that a long show. run too yeah, he really did. Mm-hmm. He was a very, I think he, when he was retiring, it was kind of like the end of an era. It was. Um, and I want to say that um, one of his favorite guests, um, which was, um, 
Norm Macdonald was his one of his last guests on his final show. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think both of those guys, like in comedian circles, mm-hmm. are kind of comedians, comedians. Mm-hmm. So there, there's a reverence there that I think um, transcends that whole mm-hmm. that whole genre and that whole show. And I don't think anyone can ever capture it as well as Letterman did. Like mm-hmm. I think he was mm-hmm. kind of part and parcel, like he did, he did, completely he did his own. Show. You had to stay up a little extra late to watch it. It was worth <laughs> it. Totally worth it. Yeah, totally worth it. So, yep. Okay, and our last number five. Number so five. I can't believe the home stretch five. here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Kelly, curb your enthusiasm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Andrew loves mm-hmm. curb your yeah. enthusiasm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't think so. This show, amazingly, they they took a couple seasons off, but it ran from two thousand to two thousand twenty four. That show was on for twenty four years holy moly Isn't that crazy there was a hiatus um for a year or two in between there um uh-huh. i think covid was part of that mm-hmm. but um but yeah incredible 24 wow. yeah that's insane isn't that crazy, that's crazy. yeah that's crazy mm-hmm. he looks pretty much the same for, i know he he kind of does for all 24 know, right? years <laughs> his hair was a little bit longer in the back maybe um yeah but yeah he um so the whole idea of Curb Your Enthusiasm started as a special on HBO that was basically like a mockumentary of Larry David doing a, a comedy special. Mm-hmm. And that then the the crux of that, that little like one-off special mm-hmm. turned into the bones of mm-hmm. Curb Your Enthusiasm, where it's this mockumentary kind of thing where uh-huh. no one's ever breaking the fourth wall by talking to the camera like they do in mockumentaries like modern family or the office or something like that right but it's done in this style that's not a three camera uh-huh. sitcom style it's yeah. like you know more on the street kind of thing uh-huh. um but uh i think the the show is so meta and for that i love it and it's also a character the larry david character is like so irreverent and Mm -hmm. honestly he's a complete asshole (laughs) and there's just something so hilarious and appealing about identifying with someone who's doing something that you have always wanted to do but would never do because polite society will just not allow it Mm -hmm. so it's it's like it's a it's a very cathartic for the viewer type of type of show and i i that kind of comedy really speaks to me so yeah Mm -hmm. Curb. Okay. Curb. Curb your enthusiasm. Curb your enthusiasm. Kelsey, what made it into your top five list? My last one, this one, the last one was hard to pick, but um, I ended up with Station Eleven. And um, I, don't even, I haven't, haven't even heard of that. You haven't? No. Oh, it's really good. Um, I really, really liked this show. And I feel like me and Andrew both really liked it. And we would get really excited when it uh-huh. you know, the new episode would come on, mm-hmm. um, cause it's a newer show. Um, but basically it's about, um, like this flu pandemic that happens and then they kind of fast forward like 20 years after, and there's a group of survivors who then make a living being like traveling performers. Mm-hmm. And, um, they, most of their stuff that they do is like Shakespeare and stuff. Right. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I don't, it's really kind of heartwarming in a sense of how they created this bond and this group after, mm-hmm. you know, the flu epidemic happened. And I think it came out maybe really close to after COVID happened. Oh, really? It was Actually, very, it was a very pandemic era. It was a very, so, yeah. Okay. But I really like it. I mean, how many seasons? There's only one. It's a one season oh, was a limited, just a, a limited, limited series, kind so. of like sharp objects is so mm-hmm. it's just a limited, limited series yeah. okay so station 11 station 11 okay. it's really good okay well it's i haven't good. seen it so yeah. i have to put it on my list okay well i'm gonna bring it home and i have um i'm still so this is just i'm just really gonna wing it there's just so many so many things <laughs> so many here choices. so yeah, many choices, so many choices. Left on my list. i know but i'm gonna go back uh in the day and so this is also another very innovative show and it was called Hill Street Blues. Mm. And it was a it was set in a police precinct and it was so real and it was so gritty. Mm. And the initial episode was so dramatic because it was really the um, two uh, police officers, their, their partners, 
were on a call and and they both got shot yeah or one of them got shot mm -hmm. i can't remember mm -hmm. exactly but anyway so so it was like in real time and it was just you just weren't expecting that kind of grit yeah. a, a tv show just hadn't depicted that yet and and there again it was a very you know, kind of like a predecessor to west wing uh, ensemble cast and very fast paced and so you're in the precinct and you you have the camera angling in and all these different characters that you come to know and love and, and hate too, but they showed the good, the bad and the ugly of mm -hmm. all the characters. And I love the, um, the, the captain. And I can't think of his name now, Daniel Farino. I want to say, uh, no, no. What is his, you have um, to hold up Kelly. What was his name? Frank Ferrillo. Frank Ferrillo. Daniel mm -hmm. J. Travanti. Daniel J. Travanti was the actor. And then, yes, Frank Ferrillo. And then his girlfriend in the series, she was an attorney. So she was the DA, I believe. So she would she would make appearances in the precinct, too. But, but there again, really just kind of set TV on its head. We hadn't seen anything like that. And there again, I was home. It was all, like on a Saturday night. I can remember calling oh, this before I was married. I think it came out in the... 81. Yeah, early. Yeah. So it was before I was married, but a young single woman. I can remember calling my friend and saying, oh, my gosh, you have got to watch this show. And she did watch it. She didn't get into it like I did. Mm -hmm. But there was just something about it, just the, the realism and uh, the the writers and the trajectory of the characters that they wrote. And it was very. Dennis Franz. Yes, he was. Yeah. It was I don't know. It was such a great ensemble cast. Yeah. Just fabulous and everybody was perfectly cast and it's just one of those shows I, i've actually have never watched it outside of real time so i've never seen it on reruns or yeah. mm -hmm, anything it, like it was that. never rerun and i think it ended pretty abruptly mm -hmm. um, i was just looking here it was created by stephen bochco which mm -hmm. is i'm like oh okay yeah that makes sense because he went on to do a shit ton of tv shows that were really groundbreaking but yeah the grittiness of hill street blues oh I remember when that show was on, my mom loved mm -hmm. it. Like my dad loved so it. So good. It was, really good it was just so good. It really was. I haven't watched any of the shows that you guys TV are talking at about. its best. <laughs> TV at its best. And and I will, you know, Madman a little bit. <laughs> I will I will wrap it up because we're we're wrapping up this episode of Message from Mom. But I think TV has we've seen it, you know, ebb and flow and peak and and you know, we've had good years and bad years. But I do think that there again it's at its peak right now because definitely instead of Hollywood you know, writers are finding opportunities writing shows and writing compelling shows and prestige TV and mm -hmm. HBO that, you know, came out there again, you know, groundbreaking with Sex in the City years ago. And but they've I think they've held their own. Mm -hmm. Some other channels have come along. But there's there are some really, really, really good TV shows out and about in 2024 when we were filming this. So sure. But anyway, mm -hmm. thanks for sharing your list, ladies. It was Thank hard. You. This yeah, is always hard. hard. It's yeah. a lot of fun. I hope that uh, we maybe shared one or two shows that you love just as much. So, and if you stop by the YouTube channel, leave a comment of what your show, what your favorite show is. I always like to, to hear other people's yes, takes on things. Sure. So, okay. Well, we're going to take a quick break and we will be back with new and noteworthy where we're going to share some of our uh, favorite things. Okay, ladies, well, let's, uh, we're going to wrap this up. We've had a lot of fun talking about our TV shows, but what do we have this week? I love this segment because we are sharing some of our favorite things that are on our radar screen. Mm -hmm. So Kelly, what do you have? So mine's a TV show, which <laughs> felt appropriate because ah. we are talking about television <laughs> uh -huh. this week, and I am a TV watcher mm -hmm. big time. So, uh, there's been a, a spate of like Japanese. Japan themed or Japan centric television shows lately I've noticed over the last maybe year, year, two years. Um, anyway, there's a new show called Sunny. It's on Apple TV. Mm -hmm. It stars Rashida Jones. I've seen previews of it. Yeah. So it uh this podcast, we're filming it on July 13th. It premiered on July 10th with the first two episodes. Mm -hmm. By the time this podcast comes out, there will be several episodes to mm -hmm. watch. Um, I'm really excited about this because not only it, I, I really love Rashida Jones, but this mm -hmm. is like a, it's a dark comedy mixed with like a mystery sort of premise. Mm -hmm. So her husband and son go missing in an airplane crash. 
Oh, I've already watched the first two episodes. And by episode two, you're like, "Hmm, maybe there wasn't an airplane crash or maybe they weren't a part of it. So it's very mysterious. I'm excited to see how this turns out. Mm -hmm. However, her husband, uh, the part of the premise, it's not a giveaway. Uh, he was working for a, an electronics company. She thought he was making refrigerators. Turns out maybe they were making robots. Uh, so upon the disappearance, yeah, upon the disappearance of her husband, she gets gifted a, a robot from the company that her husband works for. So okay. really interesting. Uh-huh. The robot is Sunny. Okay. Um, so how this robot's going to play into Rashida Jones finding out what mm-hmm. happened to her family? That mm-hmm. seems to be the the crux of the the show. Okay. But it's beautifully shot, cutely acted because Rashida Jones is so cute. She is so cute. Um, but yeah, it looks it lo- it looks fun. I think if nothing else, it'll be a really entertaining uh, romp through Japan and technology. And uh-huh. I'm always down for that. Okay. So love it. All right, Chelsea, what do you have? I also have a TV show. Mm-hmm. As with, we didn't have enough TV shows. Yeah. Let's add another one to the list. <laughs> um, so this one probably would have been, had I not done Station Eleven, this probably would have been my other mm-hmm. uh, number six. Okay. But, um, oh, hi, Oscar. Um, Yellow Jackets. Um, so I really, really loved um, Yellow Jackets. And I think there's two seasons, right? Mm, I think there's Maybe. three. Is there three seasons now? Maybe. Um, but basically it's about a high school soccer, um, girls team that sur- survive a plane crash, um, in Ontario wilderness. And, um, basically it's kind of about them surviving mm-hmm. the wilderness in the wintertime. And it's kind of what, Lord, of, Lord of the flies. It's a little Lord of the flies ish, like what they have to do in order to survive. And, um, it's a little creepy i'm not gonna lie but mm-hmm. it's good mm-hmm. it is a good show it's a good show all right well, i'm gonna bring it home and we've had a lot of fun talking about the tv shows and the golden era of tv and even you know today's tv which mm-hmm. i really think is um I mean, back in these tv and you know since we had a podcast about the demise of hollywood and i really think that all the best writing and writers are writing tv shows so but this yeah. has been a great a great episode, but I'm going to bring it home with, uh, and I have a book. So there you go. So my book, so it is, um, this is July, marks the 25th anniversary of the death of John F. Kennedy Jr. Oh, I didn't realize that. His wife, Carolyn Bessett Kennedy, and her sister, Lauren Bessett. And it was a very tragic plane crash. So um, as you can imagine, there's just a lot of media coverage that's just talking about the 25th anniversary because John F. Kennedy Jr. was such an iconic mm-hmm. person. His parents were President Kennedy and First Lady Jackie Kennedy. And when he did start dating Carolyn Bessett, I mean, there was just an onslaught of paparazzi. Uh, and that's really what was going on because he died very I think the same summer that Princess Diana died, I want to say. I think he died first. I could be wrong. There could be a year apart. But anyway, this is when the paparazzi really were just being relentless in their pursuit of their, I mean, honestly, their victims. Uh, And uh, and so Carolyn Bessett Kennedy was definitely, I mean, she was depicted not in a positive way, icy and vapid and drug addicted. That's how a lot of people were seeing her at the time. But the book that I'm talking about, so this is a book by, where is it? Uh, So it's called Once Upon a Time. It's by Elizabeth Beller. And it really just shows a different side of Carolyn and, you know, who she was before she met John F. Kennedy. She was just a regular person at a regular, I mean, a a high power job. She was a PR in Calvin Klein. Uh, But the book really just shows a side that she's loyal, vivacious, and fun. So it was just really, it was very nice to revisit this topic and this this iconic woman that was, you know, really kind of sprang on the scene and her life was cut very, very short. So, okay, ladies. Well, that marks another episode of Message from Mom, where we're busting the myth that mothers-in-law aren't necessarily monsters-in-law. <laughs>